talking about the different type of elements of architecture. This is a different uh, component that make not only architecture, but the different buildings and the parts of the building. And this is very important because all these systems, all these components, they're informing design. They're making the design. So an example will be thinking uh, about the roof. So the type of roof eventually will have some sort of uh, repercussions in the overall design. So it's not just uh, thinking of, I need to add a roof. A roof is a component or something needed for my building. But uh, at the end of the day, that roof is going to have an aesthetic component, right? It's going to look, when you pass by, you're going to look at it and you're going to, it's going to have some, some aesthetic uh, relationship to the building, but also have some structural component and we'll also have uh, sustainability, we'll have, uh, you know, water protection, it has all these different components that uh, or a relationship to that building. So it's not just, it's not learning just the components, but understanding that eventually they're going to be part of the design of the building. So any component that you see, you have to sort of think about it and say, what was the design uh, principle that kind of led to the usage of this component. So think about uh, the room that you're in. There's most likely a window, a door, uh, roof, ceiling. Uh, so is there carpet? Is there hard flooring? What is the window that you're looking at? What is the type of light fixtures? All of those are components that make up the whole room and building that you're in. But at the end of the day, those were part of the design process that led to where you are. All right, so, uh, so throughout this class, it's not just about learning the different components, but understanding that they inform design. And so they are uh, assembled together into all these different to make these architectural projects. And usually the largest of these components, they, they really uh, uh, create this predictable way that the whole building starts to correlate, right? This idea of patterns that we start to find. So we're going to look at different components. And the first thing that you need to understand when it comes to this is what type of building are you doing? Is it a multi-story? Is it a high rise, low rise? And so in your book, you can read a little bit more of those and that it usually has to do with the idea of the, the amount of floors. It has to do with the type of the structure. It has to do with an elevator or not an ele elevator. So it has to do with the idea of what is the function, what, and that's gonna lead to the overall form, right? So is this for a single family? Is this family or is this going to be for a multifamily? Is this a commercial? Is this more residential? Is this in the city? Is this out in the, um, you know, well, in the uh, outside of the city limits? Is it a farmhouse? Is this a factory? Is this a store? Is this a townhouse? Is this a, what, what is the city, right? So think about all those different type of components which kind of leads us to think about, you know, is it low rise, mid rise, high rise? Uh, those are the, the, the most common when it comes to having multiple uh, units, uh, which is kind of compares uh, from having a single family unit or house or a townhome, or tiny homes or things like that. Uh, thinking about it like that, you know, you can expand to even reaching structures such as skyscrapers, right, which are extremely tall and uh, the structure really has to support this so steel concrete framework to really, really be able to, you know, sustain this type of building. Not only that, but what about the, the, the interior of these spaces, uh, what happens to them? And so we can look, I recommend you look into lofts and see how uh, these spaces have sort of been repurposed for living and other sort of similar um, ideas. So overall, when you think of a building and talking about components, right, you, you have to think of the whole thing. Starting, let's start from the very first, thinking of the site. Where are you building? And then as we move up, we have to think, okay, now I know where I'm building. I know what kind of, you know, conditions there is there's water there's dirt you know where am i building then you need to understand the type of foundation how is this whole thing going to be supported uh, 
and as you keep going you start to create the overall structure of the building that's going to uh, very clearly respond to that structure that's going to be tied in and as you create that structure right you keep uh, you start laying in that foundation you start adding that floor line that floor still has a lot of different components that you can look later on but then you start getting all your walls and your windows and your doors you start getting the whole sort of building which sort of creates your room right and so which creates a space after that there is some sort of ceiling if it's not exposed but in this case it's not so there's some some sort of ceiling that goes on top of this room and as you keep going up there is a even a roof right and that covers the whole thing so those are all the different components and so which again they're all part of the design ideas so think about it like that right first where am i building what kind of foundation do i need like that to do to be able to build there what kind of structure will respond to that and then start thinking okay now let's start my, my floor the windows the walls the type of ceiling the type of roof so there's a lot of different components when it comes to a room or space or building in which I, I hopefully that after this presentation you can take a look around where you are and think about the different spaces surrounding you and and try to analyze all the components around you so this is very similar right when it comes to seeing the found the structure of the building but here we start to see an element and in a section right the same idea of the floor the doors uh the type of the foundation the roof the ceiling and so on so when you're drawing floor plans when you're drawing elevations when you're drawing sections you try basically what you're doing is you're showing all these different elements so in the book i recommend that you kind of go read this chapter very carefully because there's a lot of information I'm going to give you a quick summary, but it goes to different some of these components. And so as you continue this education, you'll continue to see a lot of these elements over and over again and expanding on them and eventually applying them in some of those classes. So this is sort of like a general overview, right? But this is for you to understand that there is um, many different types of roofs. It's not, not maybe because we're so used to hip roofs, um, maybe even pyramid roof, that for us it's very common, right? Like gable roof, even a flat roof. We think of a house having those types of roofs. And, and that's fine, but it's important to understand the complexity and that there's all these different, and they all have sort of different solutions, different responses, and different design ideas. So continue reading into those, and if you want to see some of these more, how they look in real life, you can just simply Google any of these, and you can find a bit more of how they look. Uh, an interesting thing that you can do is to, after you, you study this, find out what is the type of roof in your own house where you're living. That could be something interesting that you can do. Besides knowing the type of roof, there's always going to be a structural and a construction side of this. In this case, on the left, we can see all the different names and to, uh, as this roof is being labeled. Right? This becomes the valley, this becomes the ridge vent, um, right? this becomes part of the hip, this becomes the rafters, the ridge vim, and so on. And again, you'll expand more on these as you move forward, but it's important to understand that it's not just type of roof, but knowing, eventually understanding the different types of components that make up the roof. And not only the, the names and the labels, but understanding that within the same roof, there's all these levels uh, of, uh, of layers that are meant to protect, to defend, and to allow for a, a breathable roof as well. And so understanding that there's uh, within the component, there's even more components. Something else that would be important as you're building is understanding arches and vaults. Again, we'll go more into depth as we move forward, but understanding that there's different types of arches and understanding that within the same arch, there's, there's different components, right? Different names that make up these arches that eventually will look like this. And, and arches, 
most of the time they have some sort of connection to a specific culture or a specific style. So again, it's not just adding or creating an arch because you have to. It's it's one. It's does it help structurally, which we know they do, but also what is the design and the aesthetics behind it. And so combining that idea of arches, we get the idea of vault, which is very, very similar. It's, if you see the arch here, so imagine there's multiple of them just being done, done, uh, combined, till it creates a 3D form of it. And so it's like an extruded version of the arches, which again, there's different kinds, and there's different reasons to, to do them aesthetic and structurally. The idea of post and lintel is like thinking of a column. And so we'll see that most of the times, right? This idea of post and lintel has been done since the ancient times, right? We see this post, we see this column, and we see this lintel, right? Something on top of it. And so most like in your house, you have a wall, another wall, most likely some type of roof. So this and this is most likely you, right, looking at this video. So the idea of post and lintel, which becomes walls, becomes columns, this has been one of the basic components of architecture since the beginning. Also combining with the uh, some components that have been there since the beginning, this idea of corbeling and cantilever. So corbeling has to do with slowly moving um, each of the component in these cases, piece of stone, brick, right, to create a type of arch, right? This is still done, but now for uh, it's more common to see arches, but something that's very common even to nowadays is the idea of cantilever. Cantilever comes, uh, it's sort of the idea of how much span you can have without any support, right? So logically in your mind, you're thinking, Right now, it needs some sort of column or some support here in order for that not to fall. But there is, uh, this is where engineers and, you know, all the um, analysis comes in where uh, there could be not the need for a some columns here. And so the idea of cantilever because it becomes also a part of the structural design of, uh, of architecture. Combining with the idea of structure um, is what type of trusses and, spa and, 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 um, and space frames could be used to create very long spans. So everything in architecture or in designing has to do with, with uh, creating spaces. So would you want to have a room that you know has a lot of columns or would you like a room that has an open space, right? Maybe if this is a basketball gym, uh, maybe you need more space. Maybe these are classrooms and you want smaller classrooms. Maybe that's fine. So depending what you're designing will require for you to understand the types of structural elements as well to make it happen. And so sometimes it doesn't have to be um, something that is fully um, structural in the sense that it's meant to just make the building stand, but also what are some elements that could be structural, but also they're helping with the idea of shading, with the idea of creating the space to be comfortable. So if you think about it, there's a lot of different components when it comes to architecture. So in conclusion, when you look at an, uh, an, an elevation or a floor plan, what you're really drawing is all these different components. In the book, if you continue to read the book, you'll see that there's a lot of different uh, topics or elements that are covered there, such as the different uh, symbols of windows, doors, columns, and, and so on. Right? And But at the end of the day, the whole goal is that you can create a building that is fully finished, complete, having all these elements working well to create a, a well done building, functional in form. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to label them and say, this is this, this is this element, this is this. When you see it in floor plans, similar, right? This is this element, this is this element, and so on. I do want to end thinking about the site. 
like I mentioned in, the, in the, one of the first images, this whole thing starts with the site. So it's important to think how, how can you also enhance or respond to the site? How are you what how, how are you placing your building in relationship to the sun? Are you creating some open spaces to people for people to, to gather? Are you creating walkable areas? Are you creating some structures that are um, more for you know social and rest and to create shading? Are you uh, manipulating the nature and the trees to sort of create you know a, a good atmosphere in the space? Are you creating some, some sort of decorative elements that could also provide structure, shade, and comfort to the to the people living there or using this space? There's a lot of different components, but I would like for you, as you finish this video, to take a moment and, and think about the room that you're in, the house that you're in, the different components, and the design ideas that led to that. Why do you think the window is in that, in that wall and not the other one? Why do you think they chose this material and not, the, no, not this other material? Start thinking of all the different components that make your own design, where you live or where you work, and think, could there have been a different uh, option? Could there have been a better option, in your opinion, to make this uh, different components that could have made the project even better? Thank you for watching.